It is 649. This is your morning in eight minutes. Today is a WVLT first alert weather day. We're keeping track of those power outages for you this morning. And our first alert weather team is tracking how it's going to affect your morning commute. We've got Kristen Allen covering that first alert traffic and what you can expect on the roads. Uh, but first, we do want to get to Chief Meteorologist Heather Haley tracking the latest on this rainy, messing morning commute on this first alert weather day. Good morning, Heather. Good morning. Yeah, we issued this last week just knowing this was going to be impactful with the amount of rain that was coming through and the amount of hours this was going to persist. Notice we're maxed out. Everyone's dealing with rain until midday, and that's the rainy part of our first alert weather day. There's still scattered rain this afternoon, meaning some breaks, but that's when the gusts spread out. So we really are kind of dealing with two different layers here. So let's focus on the rainy part since that's the first thing you got to deal with. I'm keeping you up to date in the WVLT first alert weather app each hour on how much rain we've had so far. Here's how much more still on the way. Another nine tenths to an inch coming up through the south to central valley and foothills. There's a couple inches up top. Now there's this band here from about inch, inch and a half. This purple band along the edge of Cumberland County through parts of Morgan and parts of Anderson to Campbell. Closer to three quarters of an inch in Fentress to Wayne to McCreary and then just a little bit of drying in the foothills from those strong winds, which we'll talk about here in just a few minutes. Keeping an eye on that first alert traffic for you this morning. Just really off to a messy start this morning. This is a live look out of I-40 Alcoa Highway. We've been following a crash close to here. You can see that truck telling folks to get over for that crash. Now a lot of incidents of hydroplaning is what we have seen so far. So let's take a look at the big picture here. Really, we're doing better than we were at this point, but as we know, that's likely to change as we do get closer to that morning rush, but we're seeing a little bit of a slowdown there on Clinton Highway as well as on 640. Just folks taking it easy, not any crashes causing that, but we are keeping an eye on that first alert traffic for you on this WBLT first alert weather day. Kristen, thanks. We're also seeing a lot of reports of power outages across East Tennessee and Sevier County. Officials reporting nearly 2,000 customers don't have power. Lenore City Utilities reporting nearly 300 people without it. KUB says everything good so far this morning. We're also keeping track of your first alert school closings this morning. Take a look at your screen to see if your child's school is closed today. All of Claiborne and Cock County schools are closed. Newport Grammar School and Tri-State Christian Academy are also closed. Cock County Criminal Court is also closed with all circuit court crime cases for today to be reset. Multiple schools are on a delayed start or opening late today as well. For the latest information, just head to the WVLT News app. And Tennessee lawmakers back on Capitol Hill in Nashville this morning for the first general session of the year. Education, gun safety and taxes will be among the many items discussed. Representatives tell us most of the bills will focus on education, including Governor Bill Lee's school voucher proposal. Lawmakers could also consider bills filed for last year's regular session in the coming months as well. Abortion will also be a topic. One Republican lawmaker wants to add more exceptions to the state's abortion ban. State lawmakers are also considering banning most animals from hotels and restaurants. And last year's special session included outbursts, protests, even expulsions. And there are already lots of rallies and protests planned this morning in Nashville. This year, House lawmakers on the select committee approved penalties if representatives talk out of order. Here's what will happen. For the first offense, the representative will be barred from speaking on the topic. The second offense, speaking time is going to be shortened from five to two minutes for the next two days. And for a third offense, that lawmaker would be unable to speak for two legislative days. They also decided no visual aids can be used for speeches. Lawmakers also need the speaker's permission to use the podium and bill introductions must stay under five minutes. Once again, the General Assembly starts at one o'clock our time noon in Nashville today. Stay with us for live updates during the session, both on air and inside your WVLT News app. And Knoxville City Council also holding its first meeting of the new year today. The panel is set to welcome a new member and discuss several different topics, including new homes and issues at the Knoxville Civic Coliseum. After last year's election, new member Debbie Helsley will join the panel for her first full meeting. Council members are also set to consider a proposal to build a residence with 11 bedroom units near East Tennessee Children's Hospital in Fort Sanders. Also on the agenda, a contract to replace the broken chiller and other equipment for the ice rink at the Civic Coliseum. The broken chiller led to the postponement of Ice Bears hockey games in December. There's also going to be a resolution honoring the memory of Cameron Brooks, who died back in September of last year following a battle with cancer. Just shortly after earning a spot on the general election ballot as a city council candidate, the meeting starts tonight at 6 in the main assembly room of the city county building. 
Well, this morning, Crime Stoppers needs your help finding the man on your screen. He's accused of stealing more than $1,800 worth of beauty products and curling irons from the Ulta Beauty in Knoxville. And for, from one, it happened on Sunday. If you know anything, call Crime Stoppers. That, bot, that number on the bottom of your screen. We've also got it for you inside your WVLT News app. And this morning, a robbery suspect is in custody on a long list of charges, including assault. Yasel Garcia was wanted on robbery charges related to a carjacking that happened at a West Knoxville apartment complex back in November. Officers tell us Garcia also had meth, heroin and fentanyl on him. He's due in court tomorrow. And in Middle Tennessee, police are investigating a deadly shooting after finding a truck driver dead inside his rig. The truck was parked at a Love's travel stop in Nashville. Police say an employee at the travel center found 37 year old David White out of North Carolina unresponsive after White's company could not reach him. White was last seen Sunday night buying food at the travel center. The investigation is still underway this morning. Nashville police are offering a $5,000 reward for any information. It is 6.54. We want to get a check of your first alert traffic with Chris and Allen. Yeah, we just first alerted you to this in your WBLT news app. A crash there on I-40 just west of the way scales. This is 40 west, that left lane blocked. So this just happened minutes ago, and we are keeping a close eye on it. But you can expect to see delays on this. This is, again, west of the way scales near Watt Road area. So give yourself plenty of time as you are headed out. Here's a look at our big picture there in 40 West. You can see we have a lot of water ponding there where that indicator is in Turkey Creek. That's where TDOT has closed that left lane this morning. But here's where that crash happened. We've not seen significant delays from this just yet. But again, we'll keep a close eye on that. Taking a quick look at those drive times, you can see we're mostly up to speed and on time still, except for there on Alcoa Highway North. Five minutes to seven. It is a WDLT first alert weather day, of course, already verifying the messy morning commute. Again, flipping the switch over to widespread winds and right now they're kicking around in the moderate to heavy rain that's widespread, but then we'll have persistent wind gusts this afternoon. Temperatures rising now in the low 50s. Maryville to Knoxville notice yellows and oranges across the live radar. That's where that heavy rain is really touching almost every corner of our area. Greens here, some moderate rain still. Harland and Newport drenching roads all around the Central Valley where most folks are on the roads. Now this will continue to be pretty much every corner of our area until midday, and then it's more of a scattered coverage this afternoon when those winds spread out. So about 40% of our area seeing rain at times this afternoon to evening, bringing us down to 54 at 3 and then mid 40s at 8. Again, those wind alerts continue until 7 p.m. Wind advisories for everybody. High wind warnings for the Smokies. And that's just the first of several systems. So we've got a lot going on now. Obviously, make sure you join us at 7 on the CW. But then we have two more systems Friday, gusty rain, cooling us down for the weekend early next week. Then we could have some snow showers. So a very active first alert eight day planner. All right, Heather, thank you so much. We hope everybody has a safe drive wherever they're going this morning. Just a reminder, if your windshield wipers are on, your headlights need to be on too. Follow us over to the CW Knoxville as we continue to track your commute.